Hello everyone, welcome to this vendor session from Squared Up. Uh, today we're going to be talking about building the ultimate SCOM console. Uh, my name is Ashley Thompson, I'm the lead solutions engineer here at Squared Up. And in today's session, uh, we're going to help you understand knock dashboards, showcasing the sort of broad scoping that we use there to give key information to our users. Uh, we're also going to use that knock dashboard to investigate and resolve an issue, hopefully showing you the power of them. Uh, and then we're going to showcase some capacity reporting features of Squared Up, utilizing some of our performance tiles. And then as a bonus, we're going to clone some of our capacity reports uh, onto other objects, and, and in particular another group, uh, to hopefully show you how easy they are to replicate and spread across the environment. Finally, we're going to examine integrations. We're going to take a quick look at the uh, external data that's available to you using SquareUp's integration feature set that should hopefully highlight to you why SquareUp has a, a really powerful uh, tool set to give you uh, uh, the ultimate SCOM console. Okay, so first of all, uh, we're going to talk about knock dashboards. So these are very simple overviews for service desks, support, and infrastructure teams. Uh, they generally are scoped to use classes and dynamically populated groups so that they are always updating and they don't require much admin to keep them uh, updating with new objects. Uh, and they're also going to use those because they're quite broad in what they're displaying. So you can see large data sets uh, and actionable information against those data sets. We're going to use some summary information uh, in the form of donut tiles and also our top end performance tiles and I'll talk a little bit about how we've configured those as well. Uh, and then we're going to show you how to work with alerts on our knock dashboard um, so we'll actually troubleshoot an issue as we go. So with that in mind, uh, let's jump straight into the demo. So here is our knock operator dashboard. This is one of the out of the box dashboards available uh, when you install the product. Um, we have customized this slightly to add in some KPIs as well as some uh, unhealthy objects. Um, but you do have access to this out of the box so you get instant value from uh, installing squared up. The way that these tiles are configured are using those broad uh, scoping options. So instead of it being a set list of objects or perhaps just the, the members of a group, um, a static group that is, we're using things like classes. So in this case, this is showing all of our Windows Server estate, the health uh, in our donut here, so giving us that summary of information. We can also use some dynamically populating uh, groups. I think actually, sorry, this one here, the high CPU percent used is using the all Windows computers group. So that's going to populate whenever a new Windows server uh, is discovered in the environment. And we're able to do uh, pretty fast evaluations against this large data set uh, to show us top N uh, for that performance metric across the entire environment. And that's really, really powerful when you have perhaps a, a small team that manage a lot of resources. They may be the sort of first liners raising tickets and they just need to be able to see when an issue arises so that they can then actually go and raise that ticket, pass it to the engineers who need to actually take the action to resolve the problem. And similarly, uh, in our alerts tile, we've not actually chosen to scope this in any way. We're using uh, just the default uh, view, which is just going to show all alerts based on any filters that you specify, whether they're uh, in a particular resolution state, uh, particular severity or priority. Uh, and then you can also define the time frame here. So in this case, we're actually looking at the last 30 days. Um, were this you know, a pretty fast environment, you may only want to see the last 12 hours worth of data, and then your team knows if anything appears here. Uh, it's happened fairly recently and you need to take action, so it's a really nice uh, summary of information there. Now, another really useful feature uh, that we've utilized is being able to scope tiles to just unhealthy objects. And in this case, we're looking at unhealthy servers by using that broad scope of a class, but then also filtering on that using criteria where we're just using properties against these objects. And in this case, we're using the health state property to show us any warning or critical objects in this tile, meaning that if you see something pop up in this tile, you know that you need to do something about it. It's all good and well to have a, a dashboard with a large amount of objects on it, but if they're healthy in reality, do you really need to see that? Or should you only show the ones that need something done about it, giving you that sort of actionable information. Um, we've used the matrix tile in this particular case, um, very customizable tile with what you want to display in the inline view, um, but you can also do this with the uh, very simple uh, status tiles as well, just to give you that uh, uh, actionable insight. So 
this is a, as I say, uh, uh, an out-of-the-box dashboard that you can very easily uh, get access to as soon as you install Squared Up. It's customizable. You can make your changes and update it however you want to. Perhaps there's different KPIs that you wanted to use. You can also clone dashboards as well. So if you like the the layout and what it's displaying, but perhaps you want to refine it to a subset of objects using a particular group, uh, that clone option is available to you. It will take all of the dashboard as it is, and then you just need to come in and make your changes into each of the individual types. Now, this is available to all users who log into Squared Up. It's a published dashboard, that's the nature of it. Where Squared Up utilizes the role based access in SCOM, this will only populate with objects that the logged in user can see. So if you're an admin, you'll see everything. If you're uh, an operator with access to, say, uh, a single group in SCOM, they'll only see the objects that they uh, actually are able to see in the SCOM console. So again, it's, it's actionable to them as well. But what if you wanted to share this sort of broad overview with users who don't log into Squared Up? Perhaps this is just uh, going to give you open alerts and health for, for your entire environment and you wanted to share that with perhaps management or just the sort of wider team. Well, Squared Up's uh, open access feature is where you'd go for that. Now, this doesn't utilize uh, any authentication, so you don't have to log in. That means you don't have to configure role-based access in SCOM. It doesn't consume a user license, so you can create as many of these as you want to, and it doesn't impact the, the number of users that you've purchased. And it does also allow for some simple interaction. And what we mean by that is it will allow you to do things like expand alert lists, where you to have an, uh, sorry, a line graph on here. You could hover on the line graph and see the values at the different peaks. And it still gives you access to all of that information, and you can embed this into your intranet, place it on wall screens, and pretty much just get it out there to whoever needs it. So it's a really powerful way of being able to share dashboards. Now let's take a look at actually investigating an issue. The dashboard itself is really interesting. It's really good to see the, all of this information board if you wanted to actually investigate something. And you see straight away we have uh, a number of uh, sorry uh, critical alerts, error alerts, and we can also see these in our active alerts view. Um, really importantly though, we've actually listed here an unhealthy enterprise application. And this could be a distributed application, it could be a web test, it could be whatever you want it to be. But in this case, we've used Squared Up's enterprise application features. We can see that our availability test is failing for the app. Now that means that for all intents and purposes the application is down for our users. So we can instantly see that and start to investigate. We can either move into the application using that status tile uh, or we can move through the alerts. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to take a look at the availability test failed web alert. And that's the one that you'll see underneath these guys here. Now uh, if we jump into this one We've now got access to the information around the monitoring for this particular alert. So it's a web availability test. We can see the context as to why it's triggered. So the remote server returns a 500 error. We can see our response times from the SCOM test as well, and also our test locations. So we've chosen to test this from two different places within our environment. We can also see how that affects our SLA within this view. Now, we have a few options in terms of what we want to see uh, and how we want to move forward. The first one is let's have a look at the alert itself. So this will take us to our hosting stack. We can see the application this alert affects over here on the right as well as over on the hosting stack. We can see any history that's been applied here. So perhaps you want to update the resolution state, uh, something like uh, investigating you may want to add in here. You may also want to put in your incident number and you can update that here, and it's now available to all users who see that alert. If you're triggering email subscriptions from this as well, that will then fire off in SCOM as you've made that change to your resolution state. And you can also add in your ticket ID from here as well. So if you wanted to add in ticket ID, and if you're using uh, a portal, web portal based uh, ITSM tool, you can even link this so that it's a single click from our ticket ID here in the alert back to our ticketing tool, and it will parameterize that ticket ID that we entered there as well. Even better, if you have automation in place that's going to do that already, all you have to do is set this, the template for that, and one click will take you through. In this case, it's actually going to take us through to ServiceNow. I'm not logged in in this environment, unfortunately, but that will take us through to that specific instant within ServiceNow. So what else do we have access to here? We have our description. Uh, we can see the history that we've provided, including any of the information and the users who have provided it. Our product and company knowledge, uh, which you can define here as well, and you can also see the context. But what if you actually want to investigate this issue further? 
You can see the configuration for your monitoring via the monitor, which should help you give an indication of what's actually happening. We're at a performance uh, alert. You may be able to see the thresholds that have been applied here. But actually what we want to do is we want to dig deeper into the application itself. So I'm going to move through to our affected application. From here, we can see all of the data that SCOM has uh, collated for this particular application. So we have our response times from SCOM, we have our SLA and health state information. Got us, also got a few examples of external data here, but we'll be taking a look at that later. But if we move through to application, we can actually start to see a breakdown of where the potential problem lies. And we can see our availability monitoring is failing. We knew that already. But we can also see that our map, the topology of the application, has an issue as well. And from here, we can see that in not just the health states at the top, but also our alerting. And we also have an issue with our dependencies. Now, importantly with enterprise applications, the availability is the only thing that's going to roll up to the top level. And if that's impacted, it's most likely going to be something due to the map. The dependencies aren't going to impact that. They're not directly related to the app. It could be like backup jobs and things like that. Um, but it's not going to knock out the app when these are down. So my assumption here is that it's going to be something to do with the map. So I can either click back into our alerts, which will just give me information about that particular issue. You know, port checks failing, that's not necessarily going to give us the answer. We can start to see that there may be some issues with SQL or something else, but moving across to the map view, this is actually going to give us the uh, specific location of the issue because we have our topology built here and it's giving us a very simple view into where the problem lies. We can see those port checks failing uh, in particular to one particular node. We can see our IS objects. We know it's not those. We can see our SQL objects. We definitely know it's not those. They're all healthy. Our KPIs are responding as we'd expect, but it seems to be this one issue with this Windows service. Now, I have a couple of options. I can, of course, drill into the port checks if I want to, but it doesn't seem to be that. These three all correlate on this one particular item. So I'm going to drill down into this Windows service, and we can see now that the Windows service is not running. So very quickly, we've now drilled down from our knock dashboard into an alert, into our uh, application, into our map, and now we can see the specific issue uh, based on that window service. And in order to resolve this, you have a few options. You either open up a command shell, you query the service remotely, and you may start it up. But if you're going to do that, and you know you're going to do that often, build that into your SCOM uh, environment and utilize agent tasks to be able to do that. And whenever you're looking at an object, you have access to the task button and provided that your user has access to run these tasks it's all based on the SCOM role based access they'll be able to trigger these here and what we've done is we've actually used our actions uh, on this uh, perspective to basically add those as buttons onto our top bar and we can see right away one click I've now triggered the task on the agent and that should be the issue resolved now with SCOM, that's going to take a few moments for it to actually pick up that we've resolved that problem. So I just want to jump back to our sales application. We can already see it's gone back to healthy, so that was pretty quick. The map itself, there's a few components in there where it's going to take a bit of time. So I'm actually just going to jump back to our slides for a moment. So uh, that's the knock dashboard and utilizing the knock dashboard. Let's have a look at some capacity perspectives. So what we want to do is display KPIs uh, from pretty much anywhere in SCOM. There's, there's no limitations on what you can display as long as it's stored in SCOM. Uh, we will talk about integrations later, which is uh, data not stored in SCOM. Um, but we're going to use a few different tiles to show these KPIs. We're going to use the performance report tile to display the time comparisons. And we're also going to use our bar chart to be able to show us our current values. We're then going to take that data uh, outside of the SCOM experience and export it to Excel. Uh, one click export is available not just on drill downs or on a specific metric, but on dashboards as well. Um, and in this case, we're talking about performance, but that does also uh, exist for uh, health states, alerts, and external data, as well as some other bits as well. And if we're also going to take a look at cloning the perspective onto other objects. So we're going to take it from an application onto a group. And then we're also going to take it onto a specific object as well, where we'll need to adjust the perspective slightly to, have, to fit the new target. Um, I'm going to talk about how we're going to do that in just a second. So let's jump back to our demo. So we can see that Windows service is healthy now. Everything else should click in in a moment. Um, but I'm just going to highlight our capacity perspective here. Now. The way that these uh, perspectives work is they have a concept of scope. 
um, where they're built on top of objects, we can essentially use our related scope or our suggested scope, sorry, to essentially uh, show us related objects to this object that we're looking at. Now, this is an application. It's got Windows computer objects, databases, IAS objects, all sorts in there. And what we actually want to do in this case, as we're looking at KPIs common in the environment, so CPU memory disk, is we actually want to just filter in the disk objects for this particular tile. This is unhealthy disks. That's the only thing that matters in this case. So we're actually just going to show uh, the critical objects. Now this scoping is going to uh, come in handy a little bit later when we go to clone it. Um, if you were to leave that on suggestions, you could replicate this into other enterprise applications that have a similar structure, so Windows servers, component groups, databases, ISAP pools, but I've chosen custom here because it's going to allow us to uh, essentially look down through the entire application, so the children, uh, sorry, the child objects, at all levels and look for those logical disk objects, which means that we can actually take that and uh, use that on other uh, sort of parent objects as well, like groups. Now, what we've also done here is we've showcased uh, the current OS disk percent free, and you'll notice as well on our uh, line graphs and our bar charts, we've got Apo2 in a nice hot pink here. We can see that on the graph in the same color as well, so you can correlate that information very quickly just by looking across. Um, we've done this not just for the OS disks, but also for the data disks. And what we've done is we've utilized the large time range here, so 12 months, to help us understand, you know, if this is uh, potentially a very busy application where data storage is uh, trickling down over time, uh, you should be able to see, you know, a pretty downward uh, sort of trend there. Now, in these cases, they're actually pretty static, so we don't have too much to worry about in this particular scenario. Um, what we've also listed down the bottom is CPU and memory statistics. Now, these tend to fluctuate over time anyway, um, but what we've done is we've compared them using our performance report tile to look at uh, our uh, memory over the last quarter so that we can see the last three months worth of data but we've also compared that to the previous three months as well and that's what these dotted lines are and if I just hover on this one you can see the solid line is our current that's our uh, three months that we've set and then that previous three months is also in the, the the dotted line so again with these you should be able to understand pretty quickly uh, how a particular metric is uh, sort of going up and down and whether you are uh, potentially going to exceed your capacity over time and that's a nice visual way of being able to do it and once again with our uh, com color comparisons here you'll see it on the bar chart on the left the colors do match as well so very simple to set these up I'm um, just going to show you very quickly the performance tile here we've used our report tile for these and this is going to give us a nice uh, way of being able to display the data because it's going to suggest to us the ob objects that we want if we want to use them. Again, I've chosen to use the custom options so that is just looking at whatever object we're currently scoped to, looking at all levels and the logical disk. And then I've used another criteria option here to only show the C drives. So that's the data, uh, sorry, the OS disks in this case. And then in our time comparison, this is where we can specify our last month, last week, yesterday. And depending on what time you set within the tile, that's then going to give you the option to look at, say, uh, 24 hours worth of data versus the previous 24 hours worth of data. Again, just giving you that nice flexibility there. Now, coming back to our perspective, so we've got here our very simple um, capacity report, standard KPIs, as I said, but you can make this whatever KPIs you choose. You do have the option, of course, of evaluating the uh, metrics across the objects in this application. So it may be SQL, it may be IAS, whatever you want to build it on top of, that scoping should give you the ability to uh, specify what you choose. But what if you wanted to copy this onto another object? Well, we provide uh, a nice simple clone functionality. So I'm just going to drop into edit mode. The clone button will then appear and you'll then see we've got capacity here. If I click clone, we can now see the clone of capacity. Um, first things first, we need to move this onto a different object. Now, because of the way the scoping works, what this is going to do is it's going to look for related classes to this object. So when I remove class, 
and click into the box, it's just giving us the classes that apply to this actual application. And that's kind of useful. Uh, we can see that we can replicate it onto the, the parent class of the enterprise application. We could also do this higher up the level, uh, back up to something like service or even up to object. And that is very useful. Um, this actually gives you the ability to clone these onto other enterprise applications by choosing these options. Or if you want it to appear on all objects, you can choose object, um, which is again just very broad. That's every object in the environment, but with a caveat. Not every object has uh, percent disk free, as an example. It doesn't have disk objects, so these tiles aren't necessarily going to work in the way that you'd want. However, that is in fact the option that we want to choose here. The reason being, if we choose object, or we can just select all objects at the top, when we now navigate to another object that we want to uh, clone this onto, so I'm just going to choose the SQL computers group as an example, we'll now see that this view is available on that class of object. So in this case, uh, sorry, on, on this particular object. So now what we can do is we can drop back into the settings and we can actually say, well, this is good. This is the object I want to see it on. So I can actually just specify this object only. And now what we've done is we've taken this view, we've made it available to everything. In its draft form, it's only visible to you, the user who has made that change. But once we publish it, it will then be available to all users. And in particular, we've now made it only specify this particular object. So when I hit publish, that's now a view built on top of the SQL computers group. And you'll also notice that this has now changed slightly in terms of the objects that we're viewing. So we can see only three objects in the OS disk and data disk. Uh, scrolling down, you'll see we've only got a few objects in these performance graphs as well. And the way that that's worked is because we have chosen that very uh, specific custom scoping, to, or sorry, very broad custom scoping to say, I want to look at this particular object, so in this case we're looking at the SQL Service Computer group, and then I want to look down through this group or at all levels for the Logical Disk Server class. And we've now, using that broad scoping that applies to a number of different objects, been able to just move it across quite happily onto this group. So that's how you'd clone it onto a group. What if you wanted to move it onto a server, as an example? Again, the process is very similar. I'm going to clone this, this perspective, so we can see we've got our clone here. I'm going to drop into settings, and I'm going to say all objects once more. I'm now going to move to the object that I want to apply this to by selecting uh, Web01 as an example here. We can now see clone of capacity once again on this object. And we can now drop into here, click on settings once more, and then we can go to members of. And this is where things get a little funky. So we can have this appear just on this one object if we want to. But for a computer object, it's going to be pretty standard KPIs against these objects. You may, you probably want this to appear on all computer objects. Now because we've changed the context from where we were earlier, where we were looking at an application, we're now looking at a server, when we click into the class box, we're actually presented with the classes that apply to this specific object. And you'll notice that we have the Windows Server class. So that, if we select it, will now appear on every object of the class Windows Server. And it's as simple as that. We've just migrated this view across three different types of objects, and this will now appear on all Windows computers. So I'm just going to close our settings here, as there is one change that we need to make. If we just scroll down, you'll see that our scope has been uh, essentially blown up a little bit there. It's telling us that the scope is empty. Um, now, this is because of the way these bottom tiles were, were scoped. We were saying that we wanted to look at this object, and then we wanted to look at any child objects that were Windows computer objects. So a com Windows computer that's a child of a Windows computer, which just isn't a thing. So what we can do is very easily just come in here, and we can actually edit that to say, I actually want this to be just for this object using our suggestions. And we've now, within just a few clicks, I've got to drop into the reports on this one, so this one will just take a second. This object, back to perspective. We've now got a fully functioning perspective for capacity across our Windows Server objects in the entire environment. And I'm just going to remove the title there. We'll come back in later and we'll make those final changes for the bottom two tiles. We're now looking at the capacity for these specific objects. And it's so simple to create these views that populate against different objects. So I'm just going to move into a different server, so Web02 this time. 
We can see that capacity view because this is also a Windows Server. We now have dynamic information for Web02 instead of Web01. So I hope you found that useful. Um, perspectives in general are a, a particularly uh, complex area of squared up, but they are very powerful once you get familiar with them. Um, please do drop any questions you have into the chat. We'd love to have a follow-up conversation and help guide you through using these uh, in, the, in the best possible way. Now, on to integrations. So at a very high level, uh, integrations allow you to pull uh, data from somewhere other than SCOM. Um, in particular, we provide a web API tile that can communicate with REST APIs that return a JSON formatted response. We provide uh, some authentication options, so basic, simple, and OAuth, and there's a few options within those as well. Um, really, really great way to work with uh, tools that you probably don't collect the data in SCOM. Um, Common examples, ITSM tools, other monitoring tools, um, potentially, you know, uh, CMDB, things like that. We also provide a, a PowerShell tile for pretty much any source. Um, we provide, uh, our, our web API tiles follow the standards uh, set out for things like simple, basic, and OAuth, but that's not to say that every tool out there also follow those standards. So uh, in some cases, in, in previous times, we've not been able to work with certain APIs. With our PowerShell tile, that opens the door for you to pretty much integrate with any tool you require. Um, it doesn't need to be some application as well, it's a PowerShell script that you're going to be running, so you may just want to run a script against something in the environment, um, perhaps querying a file share for some information, recently updated files, things like that, uh, and present that on a dashboard. You also have a Microsoft SQL tile that allow you to read any uh, Microsoft SQL databases. Um, one thing I should highlight with all of these is that we're only ever reading information. Uh, so if you want to just pull a standard T-SQL uh, query into a tile and present it in, say, a line graph or a health state, uh, you're able to do that quite happily. And then finally, uh, there's a web content tile uh, to give you application previews and also embed some custom HTML and potentially a little bit of CSS there just to make your dashboards pop and also give you uh, a nice preview of web applications. Now, with the first three in that list, there are multiple visualizations for each, so summary donuts as an example, different performance options, uh, as well as being able to drive health states using the results of the queries themselves. And really core concept, none of this data is actually stored in SCOM or squared up, it's not duplicated. All we're doing is requesting live information from those external tools when you're accessing the dashboard, meaning that you're not duplicating that data and then gaining more uh, cost associated with that data storage. So straight back to the demo. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the PowerShell tile. Um, this is our latest feature uh, available in SquareUp 5.1. Um, all of these tiles that you see on screen are examples of the visualizations that are available for all of our uh, integrations tiles. So you have the ability to present line graphs, bar charts, drive health states, uh, summary donut tiles to give you information. Um, a common uh, use case for the donut tile in this scenario is actually give you summary information from SCOM that isn't based on health. So as an example, taking uh, a class of object and asking for a particular property to be summarized, the number of objects with a specific property. Uh, OS version, prime example, uh, SQL uh, version, something like that, and give you a summary view of the number of objects that match that property. You're also able to just present the scalar value as a result and the grid information, so that's just the, the result from the query themselves. And just to showcase how the PowerShell tile works, you configure a profile uh, in the back end of Squared Up. That's just very simply a repeatable part of the script uh, that you would want to use in every uh, instance that you're using that tile. Uh, and then you just build your script. Um, we do some sort of context highlighting here, but this doesn't have IntelliSense. The recommendation is to actually uh, create the script on, on the Squared Up server and then test your uh, locations, whatever you're trying to do with it, um, from the Squared Up server itself and use uh, PowerShell IIE or your text editor of choice uh, to give you that um, uh, the sort of IntelliSense and all, all of that sort of functionality and once you've done that it's just a case of essentially sort of translating that into squared up so the results of this we need a time and a value uh, in order to present it in a line graph and that's fairly common across most of these tiles and you'll also see your response data as well so very simply that's just going to be the results of the script that we're then translating into the visualization. Um, one Big recommendation with the PowerShell tile, um, if this script takes a long time to execute, um, 
recommend creating a scheduled task or having it run on uh, an, on another server and then squared up merely uh, interrogates the results of that, that script so save it into a csv or something and then use squared up to query the results of that csv rather than run the script itself the dashboards refresh every 60 seconds if you're running that script it's going to hit an issue after 60 seconds if it's not finished uh, and you'll see some errors and blank tiles so just take that into uh, consideration when you're designing those scripts but just as a few examples querying something like VMware which has uh, a fairly decent amount of statistics available to you and being able to present uh, VM power status health uh, for various things using the uh, token API or the power CLI uh, to give you information unfortunately a couple of our tiles aren't working here due to that uh, token um, but you know, this is a great way of being able to retrieve data from a tool that a management pack typically is probably going to cost you quite a lot of money. And Squared Up, you know, you can just use these as part of our feature sets. There's no limitations on the number of integrations you can use uh, or build, sorry, and no uh, limitation on the number of dashboards as well. And then finally, I just want to highlight this all web API dashboard. None of this data is stored in Squared Up or SCOM. This is all coming from external sources live. And you'll see the same visualizations across all of the data sets uh, available in Squared Up. So SCOM, uh, web API, PowerShell, Microsoft SQL, um, all of these will be able to present, be presented in the same way, which means that you get a consistent experience of how your users consume that data. Perfect. Okay, so uh, that's all I have for you today. Um, a pretty fast introduction to Squared Up, I'll admit, but hopefully it's giving you a good idea for what's possible. If you'd like to get started today, we offer a free 30-day trial. It's available on the website, squaredup.com slash free trial, or just squaredup.com, and there's a try it now button at the top. Uh, the trial provides unlimited users, dashboards, applications, and integrations, and the way the product is licensed uh, is based on a set number of users for a particular tier. Head to squaredup.com slash pricing for more information on that um, all of our pricing is transparent and available on the website if you would like to see it we have a knowledge base available at support.squaredup.com um, specifically there's uh, three products on there so SCOM, Azure and Dashboard Server be sure that you're looking at the SCOM documentation uh, but that is in depth it's deployment, configuration and also reference guides for each of the tiles and then finally uh, we also have our community answers platform where we have around 3000 subject matter experts helping each other out on a daily basis to get stuff done, not just Squared Up uh, we're talking PowerShell, Azure SQL, you name it, if you have a question that's a great place to go and get some answers uh, from a really wide user base of uh, people in the IT space so thank you very much for spending a bit of time with me today uh, if you do want to learn more just reach out to hello at squared up.com we're more than happy to book a one-on-one -on -one session with you in the meantime enjoy the rest of the conference and have a good day bye bye